Hi, uh, today I'm going to describe for you how to run a gas chromatography or gra gas chromatograph in our laboratory. This is a simple gas chromatograph as opposed to a GCMS, which we're going to do later in the year. Um, you're going to receive in lab a sample that will look something like this. As you can see, it's a clear liquid. The sample contains some proportion of cyclohexane and toluene. This is cyclohexane. This is toluene. Cyclohexane boils at about 81 degrees Celsius and toluene at about 110. But when you look at this, you can see it is a homogeneous solution, okay, which means that the two molecules are intimately mixed with each other. And what will differ, differ from student to student is the proportion of cyclohexane to toluene. In the lab, we're going to use a multitude of techniques to separate these two compounds. One, the technique we're going to use to separate it on a very small scale is gas chromatography. The, the technique we're going to use for a large scale separation is distillation. So what I'm going to show you here is how to actually carry out the separation on the gas chromatograph. So in our lab, we basically have two different types of gas chromatograph. These are the newer gas chromatographs that are on this side of the lab, and we have an older one that's on the other side, and I'm also going to show you how to use that one. I would highly recommend, though, that you not get too attached to any instrument because they're all very easy to use, and depending on the crowding of the lab, you'll have to use all of them on a given day. Okay? The first thing, and probably the most important thing to running a sample, is loading the sample. Next to each apparatus, you will find a syringe. These syringes hold five microliters, which is a very small amount of liquid. For every injection that you're going to do, you're going to inject one microliter for the entire semester. It'll always be one microliter. Don't deviate from that, okay? I'm going to show you how to load. The first thing you do when you load is you have to clean up the syringe. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling the sample into the syringe and then releasing it into a waste container. And I'll show you. I'm just going to shoot some out on the bench. Maybe you can see this. Maybe you can't. That's how much liquid is in the syringe. I don't know if you can see that. Okay? The reason I'm cleaning it this way, I'm trying to get the syringe saturated, oops, saturated with the sample we're using. So you're not going to clean it out with an intermediate solvent. You're just going to clean it out with your sample. When you've rinsed it three, or five, three to five times, you want to pump it. And my technique that I use is I'm right-handed, so I hold the sample and the syringe in my left hand really tight, and I really pump it. I put some pressure on it really hard. And what I'm trying to do is get the air bubbles out. I'll do that about ten times. Then pull in more than you need, okay, and then take the sample, push it up to one microliter, and this is something you're going to be able to see a little better in lab. Things will be demonstrated for you in lab, but the plunger is right there, and I'm going to move the plunger so you can see it moving up. And there's a little bit of liquid dribbling down the tip of the needle, but it's like nothing. It's not even going to hit you. Don't be afraid of it. So I'm going up to one microliter, okay? So I've got one microliter in the syringe. Now, on these instruments, you inject in this port, okay? So, we, we're running this a little dry today. This may or may not work, okay? I don't have 100% confidence that we're going to see peaks. If we don't, we'll do it over. Okay, so I'm taking this, taking the syringe, putting it into the port. The port's the same on all the new machines. Push it all the way in until the metal hits the metal, hit the plunger, and then hit this button. When you hit that button, you should hear a little musical notes, which usually means, means it's going to work. In a couple minutes, we'll find out if I've been successful. Um, as I always tell people, when it doesn't work, it's usually you or the syringe. It's usually not the instrument. The instruments rarely fail. Usually, you just haven't injected any sample. Okay, so if we don't see anything, we will know in a minute. Now, while that's running, I'm going to go over <coughs> and show you how to <coughs> run on the old machine. Okay, this is our old instrument. It's called the Galmax. Students are very fond of it. I think our nickname for this is, uh, what did we name it? I think it was Camilla or something like that. It has a name because it's been here for like 25 years. And um, it's, but the truth is gas chromatography has not changed significantly in the last 20 years. What's changed is the way you process data. So you'll see on old Camilla here, there's 
an old, uh, co very old computer. Um, it's, it's designed just to do uh, gas chromatography. So people really like Camilla because Camilla usually gives good results, but it works exactly the same way. Now notice, I'm not cleaning the syringe. I'm not cleaning the syringe because I already cleaned it and it's exactly the same sample. If you're running another sample, you'd have to do that pumping, that washing process. Now I'm just pumping to get air out. <coughs> I'm bringing in more, excuse me, I'm bringing in more than what I need. I'm going to bring it up to one microliter, and I messed up. I pushed all the liquid out, so I'm going to do it again. I mess up all the time. Okay, here we go. So, old Camilla didn't have her detector on, so it wouldn't have worked. So here we go, up to one microliter again. You can be a little off. The liquid will not hit your hands. Now, on these instruments, you inject into the A port, okay, into the A port, all the way until this metal touches that metal. That's what I mean. Hit the plunger, and on these, this instrument, you hit start on the very on Camilla's very old com computer, and you really have to push that start button hard. Okay. Now, on any instrument, you can look inside, and you can see what the inside is like. And of course, I've picked the hottest instrument in the world here. Whoa! Whoa! This is so hot. I can't even explain to you. This is an oven, okay? Inside the oven, on any of these instruments, you'll see a coil. And I just shot the sample in on the new instrument through that port into that coil. That coil right now is at 160 degrees Celsius, and there's a stream of helium flowing through. So I want you to think about this. We're not going to go over the theory in this little video. This is just a practical video. But I want you to think about what happens when you take a solution of something that boils at 80 and something that boils at 110, shoot it into a hot oven, and it's swept up in a stream of helium. What is going to happen? How does that separation occur? Or I'm going to close this red hot monster here. This one is very hot. It is 160 degrees. All right, they're running now. <coughs> Let's see if you're getting some peaks. You'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> You'll see on um, the modern instrument, there is one peak that has come off, and we're still awaiting the second peak. Okay, now let's go back to the old one because the old one's already done. And um, this is one of the reasons people love this old instrument. They love it because the, the compounds come off very, very, very fast. And this is more a function of the age of the column than anything else. So if you're on the old one and you want to stop your run, you just hit stop on the computer. When it stops, it'll give you all the data. And by the time this one's done, we'll be able to look at the, the newer instrument. Now, this is a typical readout. If you want to get the paper out, you hold control down and hit L. It makes absolutely no sense to the, you know, where that command comes from. But we do have the instructions up there. And then all you do is rip it off, rip the paper off. This is very old fashioned. But what you see here is a big peak. There's a little peak in there. There seems to be a little bit of a contaminant, or I might have done a bad injection, meaning I might not have gotten all the liquid in in one shot. And then you see another peak. This big peak here is cyclohexane, and this big peak here is toluene. I'm not too sure what that is just now. And then with this instrument, it tells you the times the peaks came off, and then it gives the areas. And it's very hard to see here. It says 46, 49. So we're going to go look on the instrument one, uh, on the newer one. So let's go check that out, because that's about done. How are we doing time-wise? Uh, nine minutes. Nine minutes, though. Okay, so this is uh, the end of this run. Okay, it's finished. When it's finished, you want to go acquisition stop. Okay. Um, this is not isoamyl acetate, so I'm going to change that really quick. This happens all the time. Okay, so this is cyclohexane. This is toluene. You can see two peaks. We, the, way you do, the way you work with this is just like your computer at home. You want to save it. You want to put a name on it. Save it. Okay, I'm saving it. You can put your name in there. Then you want to print it. Okay, and it's going to print across the hall. Now, what we're really interested in are not these two times, 1.6 minutes for cyclohexane, 4.05 minutes for toluene. They completely separated, okay? What we're interested in is, and this will be on your printout, 
the ratio, and you can see it's very similar to the ratio I got on the old instrument. It's 51.75% cyclohexane and 48.22% toluene. All right, so again, we'll go over the theory behind this more in lab. So I'll see you in lab.